Good afternoon, everybody. I'd like to welcome you to this week's Impact Wrestling Media Teleconference. This is Ross Foreman, and uh, special guest is a former X Division champion, multiple time, who's uh, could be in line for a, another title shot, maybe an X Division, maybe a world title, or possibly a pink slip. Uh, P.D. Williams, welcome to the uh, teleconference. You are one of the four with a lucky briefcase following last week's Feast and Fired. What uh, What's going on, P.D.? Oh, how's she going, eh? Uh, oh, it's uh, not much. Just waiting for this briefcase to be revealed to see if I'm going to get fired yet again from Impact or if I'm going to get uh, another world title shot or X Division title shot or uh, maybe a uh, tight team title shot. What are you looking for? Uh, definitely not the pink slip. Uh, I would say that's on uh, out of the four, that would probably rank number four. Um, <laughs> Which is good to yeah, hear. Yeah. Uh, X Division title, that's always been my bread and butter there. That's my go-to. I've been in the X Division since 2004. So, uh, you know, I know the game and how it's played there. Uh, I've had one world title shot. I would like a little taste of that again. And, uh, you know, I've never held the tag titles. Um, So that would be interesting as well to see what kind of partner I could uh, kind of uh, of get and – you know, go from there. It's gonna be it's gonna be interesting. Well, that's uh, this Thursday. We'll uh, we'll find out uh, your future and the future of three other gentlemen, and uh, should certainly be very interesting. Come impact on Thursday. Petey, how are things going otherwise for you? What else? Uh, what else is on your uh, your mind these days? Oh. I mean, lots of stuff. I uh, just do it everything I can with wrestling, um, you know, traveling with impact as well, doing the one night only, uh, you, I guess you could call them pay-per-views, but they're, you know, mostly live on Twitch or the, or the, uh, the global wrestling app there. Um, so just loving those things. I know we're doing a lot of shows in Canada, you know, how much I, I love wrestling in Canada in front of my home country. Um, that, uh, working on a podcast myself with, uh, with uh, my co-host, Dennis Farrell. Um, you know, we, we just had some good guests on and stuff like that. Um, you know, we just got um, with iHeartRadio, which is a, a big deal for us. Um, so I'm working, working on those things. Um, and then just waiting for, uh, excited for the future of Impact as well. I know we're going back down to Orlando to film a bunch of shows, but, uh, you know, also I know they already uh, announced that we're going to be going back to Canada for, for a handful of uh of TV tapings as well. So I'm, I'm really, really excited for that. Well, as you, as you mentioned, April 22nd, redemption live on pay-per-view. Then we do a few TV tapings for the next few days afterwards. And then, uh, June one and two, we're up in, uh, up in Windsor should be a lot of, a lot of excitement uh, upcoming. Yeah. Windsor, that's my hometown. Uh, the place where we'll be filming. I mean, that's where I actually went to school. Um, we did one of our one night only pay-per-views, that aired, I believe, last Friday on Twitch. Um, that was a, a good event. I mean, good, good seating. Um, you know, good production and all that kind of stuff. Good fans. Uh, so I'm really looking forward to, you know, taking uh, the TV tapings on the road. Definitely. What, what's uh, what's bigger in Windsor, the Petey Williams statue or the Scott Demore statue? Um, bigger physically, obviously, uh, the Scott Demore statue. Um, bigger as an attendance that people, you know, go to see definitely my statue. Yep. All right. Well, I, I look forward to seeing that uh, with you. We'll, we'll get a photo and maybe even hit, uh, Tim Hortons up in, uh, in Canada. Yeah. We'll order a large double double from Tim Hortons. Definitely. Perfect. Sounds good. Media, we can open up for questions for P Williams right now. As always, I ask you to identify yourself, your media outlet, and please only one question at a time for PD. Q&A session has started. To ask your question, please press star six. Media, it is, uh, you, you hit star six, as, uh, as you've probably heard, star six to get in queue for questions. Hello? Hello. Uh, hi, Piki. This is Coach Pia. Hi, how you doing? 
I'm doing good. Uh, so uh, my question for you is, uh, with the Lucha Underground and Impact tournament coming up, which Lucha Underground ground star would you like to face? Um, if oh man, if I had to, if I had to choose, oh, uh, that's a good question. Um, probably Son of Havoc. Um, I don't even know if he's in the tournament or whatnot. Um, but I've always had when he wrestled as Matt Cross. Uh, I always we had great chemistry, had great matches together, and everything. Um, so you know, I would like to wrestle him underneath, you know, like as Son of Havoc, and uh, you know, I think we've always had good matches, and we could put on another great match for uh, for wrestling fans. I mean, we started wrestling each other oh over ten years ago. Uh, so you know, I now I look at us, we're old men, but we could still go in there and entertain the fans. So uh, that'd probably be that'd probably be my top one right there. Yeah. Hey, Petey, John Corrigan from the Wrestling Estate here. I wanted to ask you about, uh, you know, you're still uh, under a year since your comeback to Impact Wrestling. How's it been so far? Oh, I, it's been well under a year. Uh, August uh, is when I came back. Um, it's It's been good, uh, really good, even though we've had change of management and all this kind of stuff. And uh, it, it, part of it's tough because I see the guys that uh, – even going back in August, the guys that were with the company and they, they left to pursue other things. And it's, it's always, you know, I don't like to use the word sad because I know for them, you know, it's kind of like a bittersweet thing. They're going on to other things and other, you know, ventures and stuff like that. Um, but I always hate to see people leave. I remember, you know, when I first left impact, I, I hated that I had to go and leave like, you know, kind of like your wrestling family. And I always hated to see people to go, but I understand that's what the business does to evolve. Um, so I would say that's probably like uh, one of the cons of coming back because you get attached to people and then you, you always you always see them go. Uh, the benefits, though, I mean, I love uh, all the new faces, you know, new matches that I get to have and all that kind of stuff. I look at guys that are, uh, you know, younger and come up to me and they're like, hey, Petey, you know, I used to uh, I used to watch you when I was in high school on Impact and stuff like that. And now I'm wrestling them. So I remember saying that kind of stuff to guys like uh, – you know, like Jerry Lynn or whatever the case may be. Like, I, I used to watch you, and I always looked up to those people. So, you know, it's kind of weird being in that spot now where, you know, the younger X Division guys or the younger talent is looking up to me. But I really like being in that spot as well because, you know, I'll do whatever I can to help them and their career and their character get over. Hi, PT. It's Lee Man from Live 107.3 over here in the UK. Thanks for taking the time and the call, my friend. Uh, it was just a very quick one. Obviously, back at, back in the day when you were around at Impact, first time you were part of some uh, some stable, some factions, if you will. You were in the front line. You were in Team Canada. Uh, in the wrestling world, they seem to have disappeared, and now they're starting to make a a comeback. Do you feel that there's still a place for that that stable, that faction in in modern wrestling storytelling? Yeah, um, and I was just discussing this to, with, uh, you know, my uh, one of my buddies as well. Um, I think I really liked when there were uh, stables and factions and wrestling, you know, going back to uh, when I was in high school or, and stuff like that. Um, when wrestling, I would say, was at its peak, like huge ratings and stuff like that with WWE and WCW before Impact was even around. Um, and there was, you know, all these factions and stables and stuff. And it was just so cool because you're like, oh, what stable's going to pop up? Who's going to be, the, you know, the next faction and all that kind of stuff. So uh, I really like it, especially if you have a really deep roster with a lot of members on your roster. Um, it's good because say if you have a, a faction of three or four guys, maybe all of them can't get a match on a show, but they can still make an appearance. Uh you know, maybe one guy wrestles and then the faction kind of is, is you know, there for support and stuff like that. But I, I really enjoy it just because it's there's so much dynamic you could put into it storytelling wise because um, and that's how other people get over as well. Like you can have a guy that's relatively new or is not over or something like that. and He's in a faction and they slowly build him up and he already has that rub from, you know, the leader of the faction and stuff like that. And that's how, you know, big stars are made and everything. So, um, yeah, I... I, I really liked that. I remember going back to Team Canada. Uh, it was myself. I was the captain. Then you had Scott Demore, and you know who was the first breakout star to that? It was Eric Young. They weren't expecting him to be the breakout star, but 
he was played the super air character and like the the his character was he was afraid of everything his own pyro and stuff like that and he broke out to be a star of the of that faction and they weren't they weren't banking on that um had he not been in that faction would he have been a breakout star i mean who knows i mean maybe yes maybe no so i i just think factions are good for wrestling i don't think they should be uh overkill in it where everybody's in a faction but i think there's a place for maybe uh you know two factions maybe up to four um in a in a company so i mean that, that's what i believe Hi, Beanie. It's Oliver Newman here from Broken But Glorious Wrestling Podcast. Hi, how you doing? Yeah, I'm doing good, thanks. How are you? Yeah, good, good. Um, my question is, a lot of uh, wrestlers have come through uh, Scott Demore's training school, including yourself. What is it about Scott Demore and his training that you know can get a wrestler ready for impact wrestling or beyond? You know, taking on the big, you know, the big. Um, Sorry, uh, the big, you know, big wrestling companies. Uh, gotcha. His his training style. What what gets you ready for that? Um. Well, you know, it. Well, first, it helps that Scott is is pretty well known in the wrestling world. Well, it doesn't matter what company you work for. So, um, you know, it's good if you align yourself with Scott. Um, before Scott, uh, before I started training with Scott, before Impact was around, I think he was you know, doing a little bit of work with WCW, you know, doing enhancement matches and stuff like that. Maybe the same with WWE. Um, but the one thing Scott really focuses on is, you know, what he doesn't want to do is just sign up. He takes your money. You know, I, I, a lot of wrestling schools do that. And I think it's wrong. Um, he, he knew I had talent uh, when I first started, you know, I had the, I had the basics down and all that kind of stuff. But um, at the time when I met him and I was going through wrestling school, I was still like going through college and working on my degree and diploma and stuff. And he was very, very strong uh, about and adamant about you get your college degree, you work on your school first. Once you get that, and then we could go on and pursue, you know, your wrestling career because he understands that it's really important for wrestlers to have something to do life after wrestling. If you look at a wrestling career, it lasts like what anywhere from, I, I mean, a career like where you make it like on a, a, a big company, let's say, for example, an average career could last from anywhere from five to eight years. That would be a, that would be a good career in a, in a big company. Um, so he understood that. So he wanted to make sure that all of the students had some sort of backup plan just in case it didn't work out for you. And that's what he did. And pretty much as soon as I graduated college within months, he was like, Hey, you know, they, they, they have a little angle for you called team Canada an impact and uh I, I think you would be good for it what do you think and that was kind of my opening uh but he made sure i was i was done school first so um scott's not just the guy that you know is a good trainer and stuff like that uh there's a lot of good trainers out there um and just scott has connections he's uh he cares about his students and everything and uh you know he, he makes sure that, that that you're taken care of because you know he can't succeed unless you succeed that's how business works Thank you. Yep. Hi, Ryan Bowman from the gorilla position.com. Uh, when you first uh, introduced uh, your famed finishing maneuver to all of us, it captured everyone's attention, but it was criticized by some uh, old school wrestling people after all your success. And now seeing so many other wrestlers do such crazy spots in the ring. Do you feel like the destroyer has been sort of justified now? Um, well, it was it was a part of uh, uh, I would say it, it was part of the evolution of pro wrestling that you see now. I mean, I think people forget I, I came up with that move 15 years ago, um, almost 15 years ago to the day. I believe it was March in 2003 that uh, I was I was working a match with Matt Seidel in Highland, Indiana, and I said, "Hey, I got this move I want to try," and I didn't even know how to really. I've never practiced it before. Nothing. I just kind of explained it to him the best I thought I could explain it and he just says okay and we did it and that was history and people loved it and uh, I remember sitting down with uh, I was at a, a Tommy Dreamer show and I remember sitting down next to Sammy Callahan and he said hey man I don't think you 
you realize, but you started a revolution in professional wrestling. And I'm like, what do you mean? He's like, you're the first person to actually take like a video game move and make it reality. Before that, like it was no such thing. And then, you know, Sammy runs his own shows and stuff. And he says, you know, everybody's doing the move now and all that kind of stuff. So he's like, you, you've really started a revolution. And I, I didn't really think of that. Does it justify itself? I mean, you know, usually when a move comes to fruition, like 15 years ago, it's, it's pretty much dead in the water by then. Um, but, you know, anybody that watches my matches and stuff, my psychology around it, you know, the one thing I always try to do is, is do the Canadian Destroyer because I know that's what's going to make me, you know, win the match. So, you know, that's how I kind of structure my matches and stuff like that. And, you know, I see some guys do it, like, will that do a DDT in a match? You know, they structure the whole match trying to hit their finishing move. And, you know, it's all about psychology and stuff like that, not just about doing moves. And there's a lot of great athletes out there doing moves. Um, I just wish, you know, maybe they could take a step back and make their moves mean something. I think the, the, the great wrestlers that are athletic and stuff and do athletic moves, the great wrestlers really make their athletic moves mean something. And that's, that's what I try to do with the Canadian destroyer. Hey, Petey, John Corrigan again from the wrestling estate. Uh, I want to follow up on that about the Canadian destroyer. Now that you are back uh, full time, have you seen less guys on the independent scene doing that move? Yeah, uh, absolutely. Uh, well, first, whenever I'm on a show, uh, I don't see anybody else do it. It's kind of like a respect thing. Um, but then I also hear other wrestlers come up to me and they say, hey, Petey, thanks for coming back to wrestling. And at first I'm thinking like, oh, that's pretty cool. They said that. They missed me. But then they follow up that sentence with, hey, Petey, thanks for coming back to wrestling. Now everybody's not doing the Canadian Destroyer anymore, so thank you very much. And I'm like, oh, well, that, that's, that's kind of why you like that I came back. Okay, sure, whatever. But, uh, yeah, it's definitely um, – the use of it has definitely gone down because people got word that I'm back. So now if you do it, it just looks like, oh, you're doing Petey Williams' move. Uh, and, and nobody wants to be considered a, a knockoff or a ripoff or anything like that. Um, but, you know, I mean, there's it, – it's been done. I mean, it's so amazing. I'll ask people, like, that I'm wrestling or whatever, if they've ever taken the Destroyer before. And uh, – they're like, yeah, but it wasn't from me, you know? So, I mean, I remember back in the day, like in 2003, just explaining this move to people. People were like so afraid. Uh, it's, it's like a backflip and you're landing on your head. They were so, so afraid. And now, uh, and I used to have to talk people into it just because I was trying to get the move over. And now, now it's like I don't even ask to do the move in the match. The promoters ask me, yeah, we need to get it in here. And then you got wrestlers lining up, wanting to take it and stuff like that from, like, the original person that did it and all that kind of stuff. So it's it's amazing that, you know, what has been created because, you know, in 50 years from now when I'm watching TV with my grandkids and stuff like that, there's going to be some kid that's probably not even born yet doing the move on TV. And I'd be like, oh, that was that, – that's what I did. That's what I contributed to professional wrestling and, you know – uh, not too many people say they could, they can, you know, they contributed something that will last forever in pro wrestling. Hi, Petey. Uh, this is Nick Hausman from WrestleZone.com. Thanks very much uh, for taking the time to chat today. Yeah, no problem. Uh, now, obviously, you uh, are no stranger to Impact TNA, and uh, you're back with the company now. I just wanted to know... Uh, from your perspective, what are the biggest differences now with this run in the locker room and management and the roster than previous runs you've had in the company? Um, the biggest difference, uh, I would say the scheduling of the shows. Um, you know, I, I back, you know, we'll say from 2004 to 2009 when I was there, um, we would film like a show on Monday that would air on Thursday, and then we would show, film a show on Tuesday that would, that would air the following Thursday. So we're filming two shows. So it was really easy to keep the storylines in place of what you were doing with your character and all that kind of stuff. So now um, that we will go down there, we'll film, I don't know, 10 to 12 shows, whatever the case may be in a week. Um, I constantly have to ask like Sanjay or, or Scott or something. I'm like, okay, is this happening before or after when this happens? Like, where are we at? Like, is, did this guy already win this? Ma like, I don't like, 
because we'll have to film of an order for certain things. It's just, it's, it's a scheduling nightmare pretty much for like Sanjay and Scott and Don and Jimmy Jacobs and stuff like that. I understand that. And just to keep everything straight, it, it's, it's really difficult. So I would say that's like the biggest change. And I would say that's the biggest challenge too, because um, I'm trying to remember where we're at in the show and all that kind of stuff. Cause you know, certain things haven't aired yet and all that kind of stuff. Um, I would say that's the biggest change. Also, going to Canada as well. Um, I want to say we, prior to, uh, you know, the past year, uh, we've only been to Canada like maybe a handful of times for for pay-per-views or house shows or uh, TV tapings and all that stuff. And then, you know, you look at Bound for Glory last year in November, we did a whole week in Canada. And then we just did some uh, one night only uh, pay-per-views in Canada. And it's good to see them branch out uh, outside of the United States and into Canada and stuff like that. So, I mean, I would say those are the biggest difference, um, just the scheduling and, and the locations of filming. Hi, PD. It's uh, Don Davies from Slam Wrestling. Um, I know you talked about your training with Scott Samore earlier a few minutes ago, but I'm just wondering about uh, your guys' relationship I guess after the training, uh, when you became a professional wrestler and the years after um, being a pro wrestler, and I guess currently now where he's in the office and uh, you're the talent. So how has the relationship evolved over the years and where is it now? Um, well, uh, I would say from the beginning, you know, Scott and I were strangers to each other. He was, you know, kind of just my trainer. And then, uh, you know, he saw you – know, Scott's a good, a great leader, I should say, and a, and a great coach when it comes to wrestling and stuff like that. And he can see those that are dedicated and want to work hard and stuff like that, and, and, uh, and those aren't. And, you know, he's going to – he's going to focus more on the ones that are dedicated and stuff like that, because that's, that's what you want to focus on. You want to focus on as a good leader, you want to focus on those that, that want to work hard and you're going to help develop those, those wrestlers. Um, and you know, our relationship just grew closer and closer. Uh, at one point I actually took over training at his school and stuff like that, just because he knew how dedicated I was. And he was, he, he knew I'd be able to teach the other students you know, what he taught me and pass it along. And then as time grew on, as, you know, my first run in Impact and stuff, our relationship even, I would say, grew stronger. Almost, I almost looked up at him, like, uh, even though he's only, like, a handful of years older than me, I looked at up, up to him like a father figure because, you know, we had similar goals in life and just, you know, it's not that he, like, took care of me, but I felt comfortable with him. He actually showed me the way and helped me get my foot in the wrestling business. Um, and then, you know, as I... Uh, I would say the past three years when I kind of took a break from wrestling, I just, I, I kind of broke all ties to people I knew in wrestling and all that kind of stuff and just focused on other things I wanted to focus on. And, uh, you know, it was, it was really amazing because when Scott, Scott was the one that called me back up and, and kind of talked me into coming back to impact. And, uh, it's like we picked up right where we left off. And what's good now that he knows that I've been wrestling for almost 18 years and I've been in this business he actually uh, expects and asks for more responsibilities out of me with, uh, you know, coaching the, the younger guys and all that kind of stuff. And even, you know, taking into account um, more so like my thoughts and opinions on the show and all that kind of stuff. Uh, so it just, it's good to, sh it's good that we kind of all like both grew up together and you know, grew closer together regardless of, you know, we never see each other on a weekly basis like we did before. Peter, we have an uh, email question in from Luis Morales. Mm -hmm. If you get the tag title shot tomorrow night via Feast and or Fired, who will you pick as your partner? Oh, Sanjay Dutt, of course. Uh, I got to go to my best friend in Impact right now. Uh, you know, I don't even know if he's an active wrestler, so I don't even know if that would count, but I would first ask Sanjay Dutt, uh, I would make our name the uh, uh, Seek and Destroy, and uh, we would win the tag titles. Um, if I had to go, oh, man, who would be number two? 
I don't know. I'd probably have to reach into my cell phone and call some people that uh, aren't currently on Impact that maybe I was affiliated with before. Um, but I would definitely find somebody. But Sanjay, definitely for sure. Hi, Petey. David Dunn with the New Zealand Pro Wrestling Informer. Um, there seems to be a lot of buzz around Impact's Twitch channel in the lead up to the Impact versus Lucha Underground event. And then, you know, for people like me, Hello, can you hear me? Uh, David, no, can you repeat David ask your question again, please. Sorry. Um, yeah, David Dunn, New Zealand Pro Wrestling Informer. Petey, there's a lot of buzz around the Impact Twitch channel, and then um, you know, for people who live overseas, GWN has been invaluable as well for um, you know, New Zealanders, for example, to watch Impact. Uh, when you were first with TNA in the mid-2000s, did you have any idea the sort of the importance the internet would play in uh, wrestling as you know, the business evolved? And how have you seen the business change technologically over your years? Yeah, I did not, definitely not foresee, uh, you know, YouTube and all that kind of stuff blowing up as big as it had. It had, it, had I known that, I probably would have invested in it and be like a billionaire right now. Um, so, no, I definitely didn't know. Like, Internet was kind of big. You kind of read up what's going on. I remember when I first started wrestling, I mean, I don't even know if Facebook was around. It might have just started coming out. I remember having a MySpace account. Um, but there was none of these, like, YouTubes and all that kind of stuff. Uh you know, if you want to see the the Canadian Destroyer when it first came out, you had to, like, buy a tape or DVD or watch it some other way. Um, and nowadays, I mean, you could, like you said, Twitch. Like, there's apps. There's so many apps and stuff like that where you, there's just so much content out there right now. Um, you can almost watch wrestling from the moment you wake up when you're eating breakfast in the morning till you know, when you're laying in bed uh, going to sleep. Uh, there, there's – I didn't – I didn't foresee this coming in the future. Um, and especially like a 24 seven wrestling channel. Um, I know I remember when, Oh, I don't know. probably like 13 years ago or so in the UK, I believe there was something called the wrestling channel. And I thought that was like groundbreaking. I'm like, wow, you guys actually have a channel on your television set on cable where you can watch wrestling 24 seven. That is like awesome. I thought, um, but, you know, you always had to watch whatever what was on. Now you have, like, a pick. Like, what year do you want? Oh, you want 2008? Okay, 2008. Which paper, which show? Like, it's just, it's so crazy, all the things you can watch now. Um, so I, I definitely didn't foresee that coming, and it's had a, a huge impact on wrestling. And, and especially, like, you know, new guys getting signed to whatever company. You know, they can almost become stars before they're even on TV because there's so much content out there with YouTube and stuff like that. You could look it up and be following them around and, you know, you don't have to worry about trading tapes anymore and waiting for snail mail and all that kind of stuff. So, um, yeah, I would say for, for wrestlers, it's, it's definitely helped. You can keep in touch with fans all the time. Um, I don't know. Social media is a crazy thing. We're going to get to another uh, emailed question in, and I apologize in advance to Michael because I'm going to probably butcher up your last name. Michael Wallazin, he wants to know, yeah. Petey, who is your favorite Canadian wrestler? Oh, come on, man. Uh, Bret Hart, obviously. Uh, um, yeah, I would say, you know, growing up, I've always been uh, a Bret Hart fan. You could tell by, you know, I, I, I do the sharpshooter. That's like my go-to submission move and all that kind of stuff. And, uh, you know, I've been playing a pro Canadian character since 2004. Um, so yeah, definitely. He's had a huge impact. Um, and just, you know, even when you watch his, just so much of the little things that he does, like technically wise, he was great executing moves and stuff like that. Um, even like when his sell, his subtleness and everything just adds so much to, to his matches and everything. And even when he, you know, he used to speak on the mic to the fans. You actually, even though he didn't have any, like, big – well, you know, best there is, best there was, best there ever will be, he had the one catchphrase. But when he spoke, he spoke with such conviction that you believed him. Like, I remember that whole Canada versus U.S. thing. You know, I, I – you, you believed, and, like, the fans believed, too. Like, wow, this guy, you know, really loves his country. Um and, you know, I feel the same way. I really love Canada. That's where I'm from. I, I think any Canadian is very patriotic. And, um, yeah, I would say he's definitely my favorite Canadian wrestler of all time. 
Have you met him? Oh, yeah, numerous times. Hey, Petey, Mike Tillman from ProWrestling.com. How are you doing today? Good, thanks. Thank you. I just wanted to ask, um, so it's like the old school X Division style has kind of become the framework for what almost like all of the high-flying indie style is nowadays. Um, I, I just kind of wanted to ask in your travels, have you? is there anybody uh, off the top of your head, maybe one or two or three people that you have seen nowadays that are like, man, we need this person in the X Division or like you could build, you know, obviously you have Trevor Lee and uh, Desmond Xavier and Tai G, uh, and a bunch of other guys who are great in the X Division right now, but is there anyone that comes to mind right now that you're like, you would love to have on impact every single week? Uh, that's a good question. Um, but I mean, you are right about, you know, you don't realize back in, let's say like 2004 or five, all that kind of stuff that you were like, that that was like the, the glory day of the X division. Like that's what like started it all. You didn't know you were molding the framework for not only high flying stuff, but like you watch any wrestling match in any wrestling company and around the world right now, if you go back to 2005, you're like, wow, these guys were ahead of their time. You know, Cause that, that, that's like, we molded it into like, that's kind of what it is nowadays. Um, but, you know, I don't know if I have an answer to that question for who who stood out on the indies for me. Uh, and, I, like, and the thing is, I'm, I'm, I'm a little out of touch with wrestling, so I don't know if, uh, you know, these guys are signed other places and stuff like that. But I just remember seeing when I came back, you know, working for, like, Tommy Dreamer and stuff and up in Smash Wrestling in Toronto, uh, you know, they had uh, uh, Jeff Cobb. You know, who's like, I, I think he has like legit records for powerlifting and stuff like that. But he could do like moonsaults and stuff. And he's built like a 280 pound guy. And he's just so strong. Like that guy would be uh, pretty, even though he's like a bigger heavyweight type guy, he wrestles that X Division style. And he's just, uh, you know, he's great to watch. Um, I'm trying to think of who else. You put me on the spot here. And I didn't know I was going to have to name all, Sorry about that. all these guys. <laughs> Yeah, but I mean, you know, one guy that really stood out when I first came back in August, just seeing him, I'm like, wow, who's this guy and why have I never heard of him before? So, and I don't know if he signed with other companies or, or whatever the case may be, but um, yeah, he would definitely do good in the exhibition, I would say. Just, I, I always just look for something different um, rather than who's the best high flyer and stuff like that. Because, I mean, nowadays, you know, everybody can do backflips and 450s and all that kind of stuff and back when i first started if you could do that like you were special now it's almost like it's a prerequisite to having to do it just to get your foot in the door in, pro, pro, uh, in professional wrestling peter we got an email question from ganzi strong he wants to know what was your best match in impact uh well i would say recently um and you know, when I think best match, I just think of uh, other things rather than the mechanics of the match itself. Um, it's when I wrestled Eli Drake in Ottawa for the, the heavyweight title there. It was just um, everything lined up. Like, we were in my home country. Um, it was, like, the main event of Impact, like, uh, two weeks after Bound for Glory. Um, and he was coming off a hot feud with uh, um, Johnny Impact. And then the, the next day after Bound for Glory, I came out. I challenged him to the following week, uh, you know, for the title. He accepted. So I was I was pretty much his first, you know, mini feud right off of uh, right off of Bound for Glory, our biggest pay per view of the year. And uh, yeah, and we went out there. I, I thought the match was was good. You know, I felt really good about it. And just it, I, I've never had a world title shot ever in my life. Um, so, and just to have that in my home country, I, that was probably my favorite match recently. Uh, if I had to go back, uh, I would say probably, oh, against, you know, that's a good question. I really liked my match. I don't remember what year it was, but it was Slammiversary against Frank and Kazarian. Uh, I was just coming off of a broken orbital bone. Um, that was uh, That was one of my one of my favorites too. And then a match against Chris Saban, I believe it was December of 2004. Um, 
that that was one of my favorites as well. So you know, I was like, I would say my top three. A lot of people say that it was the X, the uh, ultimate X match between myself, AJ Styles, and Chris Sabin. I really like that one. Um, it, I just, it, it wasn't like a like a singles match. It was more of a gimmick match because the ultimate X. So that's why I wouldn't pick it as one of my uh, favorite actual matches. Hi again, Pete. It's Oliver Newman here from Broken But Glorious Wrestling Podcast. And the question I wanted to ask is, um, is there any X Division legends from the past, um, if you could, bring them back into the new X Division in Impact Wrestling? Who would you bring? That's another good question. I was was like, who would I want to see in the X Division? Man, I wish I had these lists. You know, if you gave me some time to actually (laughs) go through and think about it, I could probably answer all these. Um, you know, uh, I always liked Loki. Um, I remember, and I, I told this to him to his face. I said, you know, I didn't like wrestling him before. I didn't understand his style. I, it, it, it was difficult and stuff like that. But by the end of his his one run there, when he was Senshi, um, man, I almost cried when he left because I loved wrestling him uh, by the end of his uh, his run there. So you know, I always hate to see him go. Um, so you know, yeah, obviously, I would like uh, like Loki back. Uh, amazing red too i don't know what he's up to nowadays but man i love me some amazing red um let's see who else i mean i would say i would say those two are the top and then obviously all my buddies i'd like to have back there but you know they're under contract other places um so yeah i mean i I think that's low-key and red cool thank you very much yeah, no problem. Hi, Petey. This is BQ from the Impact Lounge. I've got kind of a two question for you, so or a two parter, I should say. So last okay. time we spoke to you, uh, I don't think you were so sure you were going to be around past the post Valfrey Glory taping, and here we are in, in March. So how did they uh, come about that you're still still here with the company? And then the second part is how's it how's it been for your kids to see you on TV, and how's it been? knowing that they're watching you, especially with these great Canadian reactions that we see. Um, so the first part, you know, I just, uh, I just never know what the next day is going to bring after, you know, this, a certain set of tapings. Um, you know, I already, I'll tell you, I've already spoke with impact. I will be at, you know, redemption, uh, in April and the set of tapings after that. And after that, you know, nothing's, nothing's set in stone. So, um, I don't want to say like, yeah, I'll be here for, you know, I have a three year contract or anything like that. So expect me to be here for three years. I, I, I can't say that, but what I can say is I'll be at the next set of tapings. That's for sure. I'm already locked in for that. Um, then the second part, what was the second part of the question? Oh, the kids, how is, right? yeah. yeah. Their reaction. And then just you, you know, knowing that they're watching you. Um, you know, that's, that's, that's been pretty special. Cause that's been uh, part of my, uh, part of what um the more you kind of got me to come back he's like oh you know i thought your kids might want to see what they what you used to do so um it, it's good i remember you know my wife uh, we had a local show kind of but it was aired for a one night only um just uh, pretty close to my house and uh i uh it, it was great seeing that she brought all three kids and uh you know, just to see their dad, even though we were in uh, the U.S., when I came out of the crowd, the big reception I got, we we're uh, pretty close to Canada, but so a lot of Canadian fans were there. And, you know, I, my kids were just like, wow, that's my daddy? Like, people are cheering for him? He's just my daddy at home kind of deal. So, um, man, it was one of the most, like, special things, you know, it just brought a tear to my eye. Um, you know, it, it was just, it was, it was really special. So just... Um, you know, doing it this time, like you're just, I didn't have kids the first time I was, I was with impact. So now, you know, you just, your life changes, you know, wrestling used to come first and foremost to me always, you know, and now, you know, that's, that's not it anymore. As much as I love wrestling, I'm always going to love wrestling up until I'm like a hundred years old. Um, you know, my kid, my kids, my family comes first now and wrestling, you know, comes second. And, uh, but it doesn't mean that I still don't love it. I just, you know, I love my family and my kids, uh, more. All right, thank you.
We got an uh, email question from <coughs> Rory Stills. He's asking, what is your opinion of uh, Timmy Callahan's no remorse attitude toward the incident with uh, Eddie Edwards and the baseball bat? Um, you know, and I talked about this in my podcast. Um, you know, and it, you guys can check it out if you want my, you know, full, long opinion of all that kind of stuff. But, uh, you know, I'll just stay in short. You know, uh, accidents happen. Um, having no remorse, if that's what, you know, Stanley, Stanley truly believes, you know, uh, that, that's, that's the type of person that Sammy is, I guess. Um, it makes me wonder if I, you know, want to step in the, step in the ring with him. If I should bring a bat myself, if I step in the ring with him, I mean, should I look out for myself? I mean, I, I, it's a tough situation. Um, and to have no remorse for it. I mean, I just hope Eddie Edwards, you know, really does a number on him. Uh, when they finally get to face each other. That's all I'll say about that for right now. Hello? Yeah. Hello. Uh, yeah. Uh, so, Piti, uh, as a pioneer of the X Division, uh, what are your thoughts on the current X Division roster and uh, who do you think has the most potential to shine? Right now, currently? Yeah. Oh, um, you know, I really, really like Trevor Lee. Um, I think he brings a different dynamic to the X Division. I mean, he's so athletic and stuff, but he's, you know, he can he can also wrestle the heavyweight style. Like, he's kind of that in-between. So I could see him, um, you know, he's and he's young, too. I could see him once he's, uh, you know, done doing what he's doing with the X Division and stuff. He can move up to the heavyweight division. And it's not that he's moving up. We'll say it's a lateral move. He can go to the heavyweight division. And, uh, you know, really make an impact there as well. So I, I'd say that Trevor's ha- has a good future with the company. Um, who else? Uh, Desmond Xavier, I said before. Um, you know, he's super smooth in the ring, so good as well. Uh, I would say he definitely, and he's young as well. Uh, he could definitely be the future of the X Division as well. So I would say those those two guys... Uh, definitely stand out in my head. Yeah. Biddy, Will Copeland would like to know who on the current Impact roster have you never faced that you would like to get in the ring with? Oh, man, once again, uh, if I had a list in front of me, um, let's see. You know, yeah, if I won the tag team title shot, I would like to face uh, the current LAX. I feud it with uh, the former LAX before, um, so yeah, you know, I'd like that. Um, let's see, but it's who I've never faced before. I, I faced Johnny Impact years ago at a local show, and I really enjoyed um, working with him. I'd like to, you know, I'd like to wrestle him again, you know, for Impact mm-hmm. this time around. Uh, wrestled uh, already a lot of the X Division guys. Um, who else? I mean, I, I, I wrestle a lot of the guys already. So I, I mean, that's a really tough question. Um, even even uh, Ohio versus uh, OBE. I, I, I've wrestled them on a local scene, but I'd like to wrestle them again, like on Impact. Um, Eddie Edwards, I wrestled locally as well. I mean, these are all guys I would like to wrestle on Impact. I just never got a chance to do. Actually, you know what? No, I did wrestle Sammy Callahan as well. Man. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess I'll say the the current LAX. I mean, they'd be on the top of my list for sure. Uh, good question. Tell Was that Will? Tell Will that was a good question. I guess one, one person you didn't mention, what about the current reigning grand champion, Josh Matthews? Oh, man. You know what? Put him on top of my list. I've never wrestled. Does Josh even wrestle anymore? Oh, I'm sure he'll tell you. He he could be the world champion. You gave him one totally. shot, he'd, he'd win it. Guaranteed. That's straight from his mouth. Yeah, okay. Yeah, let, let's put Josh Matthews on the top of my list of guys that I would want to wrestle.
Uh, Ryan Bowman from TheGorillaPosition.com. Again, um, Impact's going to be facing off with Lucha Underground on April the 6th. Uh, your thoughts on Lucha Underground, not only the in-ring style, but uh, also the way that it's produced and shot? Yeah, it's a different dynamic, and I kind of like it because it stands out, and I think that's the reason why they get um, a lot of notoriety on, like, just in the media and stuff like that. It's because it's, it's not shot like a typical wrestling show. It's more like produced, I don't want to say like a soap opera, like a like a Latino soap opera, but it, but it kind of is, you know, and they have wrestling mixed in with it, and it's like great talented workers in there, for sure. Um, so... I mean, I don't know. I, I like the product. Um, you know, I don't know what else to, to to say about what I really like is that Impact and Lucha Underground are doing something together. You know, and I, like, and I think it's Impact's goal, and I don't know this, but to do things with other companies. Like you, you saw, um, you know, like maybe something with uh, like Tommy Dreamer and the House of Hardcore and stuff. And, you know, just Impact branching out, making – you know, kind of relationships with other companies and stuff rather than just trying to battle other companies. Um, I think that helps the wrestling community and help the wrestlers work in, you know, other places that they want to work. So, um, you know, I, I, I really like their business model and, you know, how they produce their show. Yeah. Uh, so, PD. You are already a part of one of the most famous stables in Impact. If you had a chance to create one more stable, uh, what would be what would it be, and who would be your stable mates? Oh man, that's a good question. Let's see. Well, I mean, why not do Team Canada once again? Just call it something else. I mean, don't put me on a spot to make up a name right now, but you know, I'd have to think about something like that. Um, you know, we're we're pretty much a Canadian-based company now, so you know, I'd like. It'd be awesome if uh, Demore was the coach again. Uh, maybe if we had somebody like uh, Allie as, you know, our, our female. Um, or even like uh, like Casey Smelly or something like that as our female. Um, man, it'd be good. See, and I don't know who's under under contract with other places and stuff like that. Even Tyson Dukes, I don't think he's under contract with anybody. Um, you know, he's a great Canadian wrestler. Uh, uh, a great Canadian wrestler, um, even like a Michael Elgin or something like that. Uh, you know, all, you know, I mean, those are, those are a couple guys. Uh, you know, I, I'd like to, and this is going back to another question. Who would I pick if I, uh, if I won the, the tag team title shot, you know, maybe I'd switch my vote to Tyson Dukes, bring him into impact. And, uh, you know, we could form a little stable right there. So uh, yeah, I hope that answers your question. Yeah. Thanks. All righty, Pity. Well, I appreciate it. We've taken uh, just about an hour of your time today. Very much appreciated. And um, big Feast of Fire reveal this Thursday, tomorrow night on uh, Impact. Uh, what's your final thoughts? Oh, man. Like I said, no pink slip for me. Um, I will be totally content with anything else. Um, and I, th- I have game plans either either way. Whatever happens, I have game plans going in all three directions, no matter which case I get. So, uh, yeah, just make sure you guys tune in uh, Thursday night to see who gets what. And, uh, you know, enjoy the show. Sounds great, Pete. We'll make sure uh, that Josh Matthews has he gets to hear exactly what you said about him. Because I'm sure that would be uh, very entertaining for everybody. Yeah, Josh Matthews, top of my list of guys that uh, I have not wrestled yet on Impact. Yep. Number one, right there. All righty. Petey, thanks so much. Media, I appreciate you guys calling in, as always, and we'll talk to you next week. All right. Human Day session is over. Goodbye.